worship towards you. My life is beautiful to God, right? It's everything. No, not everything. But a lot of my life is beautiful to God. Why is that? It's because he is causing me by his spirit to live like him. You cannot try on your own to be a so-called Christian. You cannot do it. You cannot just try hard enough to worship God. You have to do it through spirit. And the only way, it's only one spirit to worship God in, and that's through his Holy Spirit. You, you remember, I'm, I keep on using this almost every week, but you know it's the same thing with the balloon example that we use. You have to have his spirit inside of you so that you can go up with the helium. If his spirit is the helium, it causes you to go up. If you try it on your own, you go up and then you go right back down. Actually, it's like this. It's more so like the plug and a fan. A fan does not work unless what is the most important part to a to the fan is the power. Without the power, the fan can't do what it's caused to actually do. And so a lot of times we're plugging up not to the God's power source, but to everything else and it has no power. Welcome to the plug. All right, so this is a battle, okay? This is a battle. And during this battle, this is going to be kind of a, a, a game to see who can come up with the best answers for these questions that we are going to ask. So each team is going to have one captain. Each team is going to have one captain. So you're going to pick one captain. Now, before you pick the captain, this is important. In order to pick the captain, if you can me clap once. If you can hear me clap twice, that was a horrible. If you can hear me clap twice, can, can we all get it just right just one time? If you can hear me clap twice, yay. All right, so each captain also, you know, they're going to be responsible for your group interacting with each other. If your group's not talking, whose fault is it? It's the captain's fault, all right? It's really the group's fault, but we're just going to blame the captain, okay? The captain also decides who is going to stand up and answer the question for the team. The captain does not have to answer the question, but the captain is responsible for making sure that whoever stands up knows what they're talking about, okay? Uh, each question, each answer is going to be based off of three key things. And so we have three judges that are here, right? Judge number one, which is Chaz. Judge number two, which is Kenya. Judge number three, which is Marcy. And so these judges are going to be grading your answers based off of three things. Rule number one, articulation. Are you speaking loudly? We'll put those up on the screen for me real quickly. Articulation. Are you speaking loudly, clearly, and confidently? Number two, going to be revelation digging deeper than just the surface meaning like don't just answer nothing basic I need you to answer this like kind of deep and number three which is interpretation explain how this relates to your world and your life okay so if you give a good answer they're going to give you three points if you get a bad answer you're going to get one point if you don't like what the judges give you go talk to them afterwards okay just be like yo why you give me that kind of score okay and then like Huh? <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, come at them like that. Like, whole group. Like, why you give me that score, dog? All right? Because some of them going to be really difficult. So, really quickly, go ahead and pick your team captain. Pick your team captain really quick. Pick your team captain. Pick your team captain. Pick your team captain right now. Pick your team captain. <laughs> what grade level is this? Middle school. Middle school? Hey, um, if we could take a couple people out and put it, add them to this group over here. Add a couple people to that group. Add a, either, yeah, and, and out of that group too. Add a couple people over there. 
Yeah, you can go over there, Trey. You got, there's a chair over there. And then if you could get a couple people from that one too. I was just moving them around some. All right, who's the team captain, team captain, team captain? Raise your hand, that's you. The team captain, okay, boom. Team captain over there, boom. Team, okay, boom. Team captain right here, okay. You team captain? You team captain? He's not team captain? Yeah, I wouldn't pick him. I want to pick him after that one answer that he gave earlier, but it's up to y'all. Y'all the team. Who y'all picking? No, he is. He, he great answer, but that last one, he did. He did. He did. But hey, that's your group. So y'all chop it up. Hurry up. Who's the team captain over here? He was team captain. He said, I was the team captain last time, bro. <laughs> Who's team captain over there? All right, all right. Bet, 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 bet. All right, so let's get ready to jump into it. Let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. Let's see who's going to win. I got prizes for the winners today. I'm giving out prizes. I'm feeling real holiday spirit. Yeah, I'm feeling generous. I'm feeling generous. All right, all right, all righty, all righty. Should we do a practice? No, nah, let's just jump into it. Just jump into it. All right, let's jump into it. Yeah, we went over it already. All right, we're going over when you stand up and answer, out of the group that I pick, okay, articulation, revelation, interpretation. Make sure you talk clearly. Don't be in the phone like talking like this, like blah, blah. Like we can't understand that, okay? I need you to talk clear. I need you to dig deep. Revelation, don't give me nothing basic. If you give me a basic answer, that's a, we should get the zeros, bro. I think we should get the zeros, but... Uh, if you give me a basic answer, you're going to get a real low score. And then the whole high school and middle school side is going to be mad at you, okay? And then the last one is going to be the um, interpretation. How does it relate to your world? So when you all are talking, how does, this relate to, how does this relate to whatever school you go to, your life that you're living right now? Because the Word of God is very applicable to your life right now as we speak, okay? Y'all going to stick with him being team captain? All right, cool. All right, Mason. He won't let you down. All right, so first one is this. How many people of y'all read y'all Bibles this week? Who read their Bible this week? Let me see. Who read their Bible this week? Okay, okay. I see three, four hands. So some of y'all, okay, okay. Some of y'all ain't read your Bible this week, so this is what we about to do right now. You, you said, I kind of, I did the one verse for the day. That don't count. Not it kind of do count, but all right. Let's read Luke this is what we're going to do. We're going to put it on the screen, or you can pull out your phone. You're going to read Luke 11, 9 through 13. Luke 11, 9 through 13. And I want you all to read this quietly to yourself, and I want you all to start grabbing things from it. Okay, we'll give you all about three minutes to read this, and then we'll, I'll give you all time so you all can start discussing. Luke chapter 11, verse 9 through 13. Ready, set, Y'all can go ahead and read.
All right, how many people need a little more time? Or are you good? Who needs more time? All right, all right. Y'all, we'll, go, we'll give you all like one more minute. Um, make sure you are looking at what can you grab from this? All right, what can you grab from this passage? All right, bet, bet, bet. So really quick, first thing I want y'all to do is go ahead and like just chop it up. Y'all talking about what did you take from this passage? What did you take from this scripture? Okay, so remember the three things we're looking for, but what did you take? What was the biggest thing? And y'all got to come up with something. Y'all come up with a group of something really good. Y'all go ahead. I'm going to give y'all two minutes to talk about that. I'm going to give y'all two minutes. Let's go. Hey y'all, that got mask on. Make sure you talk loud because your mask is gonna muffle you. So talk loud. Okay? I got you. As far as stuff in the most is uh, verse 11. When he's talking about if the son asks you for bread from any father among you, will you give him a stone? If he asks for fish, will you give him a serpent? Right, just pull yours off a little bit and then uh, just pull it off a little bit. Right. Or you didn't have to pull it down, you just pull it like off the mouth. Right. Um, so that stuck me the most. If your parents can give you good gifts, People around you give you good gifts. Imagine what God in heaven can give you. That's what stuck me the most. Okay. Um, well, I remember like the first time I was asking for was saying like for everyone who asks or see like if you ask for forgiveness or something from God, you'll get it. I don't think I was even on the right one. I read it exactly how it was. I didn't say nothing. Y'all can't relate to y'all, right? Okay, okay. Uh -huh. okay. I thought um, God wants us to seek Him and everything instead of like other people. Um, okay. God, God doesn't want you to um just go off for like people say and stuff like that because of like a lot of social media these days. Like TikTok too, like it would influence you. These things, you know, and God's like, don't seek that, seek you know, don't ask, ask them, like, ask me. Like, I mean, okay. Yeah, they seek God first? No, no, no. What, is, what does it look like when they seek another people? 
Give me an example of the situation. Let's make sure you speak up. Okay. Let's say that you see somebody have a different type of style and you try to copy it. And you put it out the world and it starts a whole trend and everybody's copying it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part. I didn't hear the last part. <laughs> That's why I was like, wait, what? Okay, everybody tries to copy that style. Alright, y'all, one minute, one minute, one minute. Wrap it up, one minute, one minute. Okay. 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 So, so you feel like a lot of times in life, people want to imitate people instead of imitating God. Yeah, that's how I was asking. Yeah. Like, I would say, if one person is able to be kind to go out or do something that's shady or out of the ordinary, mm -hmm. that goes against what he's saying. Okay. And that one, well, like for example, that one dude that was in the Bible, like, um, like he wanted, uh, he asked God for, I forgot, he asked God for something, and God didn't give it to him at that time, that time. So he went to, I think, a witch or something like that, and, uh, they, he, he wound up a dead person or something like that, and, uh, that person and God was like, you know, why you know, I don't know, but uh, that's all. Okay. It was in a Bible study. Okay. Anything else, though? I said, um, Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So, so sure, let's be good. Let's be yeah. really so quickly. Make sure Ernest is good. Um, y'all give me any last little things. Y'all all, all got to participate. Which side right. we gonna start with? Middle school? We gonna start with middle school? Alright, alright, I'm gonna go with Katie. I'm gonna go with Katie. Alright, let's start with this group right here. We're gonna go with this group right here. We're gonna go with this group right here. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh oh, they they nervous over there. They nervous, so they arguing over there. Like, no, 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 no. He said, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 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 Let's for you? Did you want to add any more? Because I'm not the judge, but I'm just saying like you, you may want to. Yeah, yeah, talk it through with your team. Gives you good. <laughs> Say that one more time. Gives you good. Give you good. Give you good. <laughs> Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's clap it up for my man, Jordan. All right, all right, all right. All right. I, think that was a, I think that was a phenomenal answer, but that's not up to me to make the decisions. All right, I don't get to make the decisions here. So, let's start it off. Marcy, Marcy, Marcy. Where you at, Marcy? Oh, she signed it. Kenya. Give me what, give me your first score for that one, please. We got a one. We got a one in the building. All righty. Chaz, if you can give me the score for that one, please. One as well. And Marcy. Oh, oh. <laughs> one as well. Three points, three points, three points. Four, three. Stephen Curry with it. All right, all right. Three points, three points. So let's go ahead and pop it off with the high school side let's pop it off with the high school side let's get let's get that group in the back over there let's get that group in the back over there because it seemed like they were struggling a little bit too let me see it let me see it who's in that group yeah yeah your group your group bro your group your group yeah 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 who got the mic who got the mic if you could get the mic over back there. Let me step past it. You got it. Oh, 
Okay, the leader has given it to his person. Hello. Hello, what is your name? My name is Arianne. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay, so my take on the message, I basically compared it to like when your friends are giving you Christmas gifts, right? Okay. And so they ask you like, what do you want for Christmas? Like what is your major wish, right? And so you tell them and they get that exact gift for you. But when you go to somebody like God and you want to ask him like what you want, um, he will probably get you that gift, but sometimes it, it just depends on what you're going to do with it. And it depends on if he feels it's right for you. Because sometimes he won't get you exactly what you want, but what you need. And in the end, it works out better than had he got you that specific thing that you wanted. Mm. And so at the end of the day, it's always, at the end of the day, he's going to get you what you need. And it's not going to be something bad for you, but something that's going to be good and that'll prosper in the end result. Mm. Yes. That was good, that was good, that was good, that was good. I think that was an excellent answer, but it's up to the judges. So, Sir Chaz, what will you give that, sir? Three, three points. Marcy, three as well. And Miss Kenya, three also. All right, I think that was a good answer. I think that was a good answer. I want to point something out really quickly because I think we might have missed a very important piece to this, right? The scripture says, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open, right? Seeking you will find, uh, knocking the door will be open. But ask, and, and so what the scripture is really talking about something really specific right here. He's not just talking about any gifts. He's talking about one gift in particular. For a bonus points, middle school, bonus points. What gift is he specifically talking about in this passage? His hand, oh, uh, yeah, you can pick Denard. Wait, wait, you got one, you got one. You got, no, 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 he ain't, no, no, go on. You got 10 seconds, nine. Wait, wait, go on. For the gift of entering the kingdom of heaven. Say it one more time. The gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of, the gift of, Entering the kingdom of the heavens. Come on, Mason. Okay, okay, okay. So if you look at the bottom of this, let's read this last scripture really quickly because this is really interesting. This is, this is really has a lot in this scripture. It says, if your parents know how to give you good gifts, if you ask for an egg and he gives you a serpent, that's not a good gift. We all know that, right? Like you ask for an Xbox and they give you like, a Nintendo 64 is like, wait, what? Like, what am I going to do with that, right? Like, if your parents know how to give you good gifts, God knows how to get better gifts. If you ask for this one specific thing, let's go to verse number 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So Mason was halfway right. Because he said the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. But we're going to give you about three extra points for that. Add three more points over to middle school for that one. Add three more points. Y'all like, dang, man. Because uh, it, did, it is the Holy Spirit. If, if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, he's not going to give you a different type of spirit. He's going to give you something really good and necessary for your life. But you have to ask for that. You have to ask for that. You have to ask for that. Um, question number two that I want to go to really quickly. Question number two, and then we may come back to this one. Have you ever felt the presence of God? What was the situation or experience like? 
Have you ever felt the presence of God, and what was the situation or that experience like? You all can go ahead. I'll give you all about three minutes to discuss that. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. Have you ever experienced the Holy Spirit? Okay, guys. I know y'all been talking about that. Speak up. Alright, some happened to me where a point where like, I was shot and you know, like, like a bullet was like, and it was like right here. we're going to do it a little differently. We're not going to randomly choose. I'm going to actually give groups an opportunity. So I'm going to give the high school side an opportunity. If somebody feels like their group had a really good one and they want to share that, we'll see that. And then if the middle school has one that they feel like was really good and they want to share, they could do that as well. Or we could randomly select. Or we could randomly select. All right, so we're going to start off with high school. High school, any high school groups feel like they got, like, yeah, yeah, this will be a good one. Our group will definitely get three points off of this one. Your group? All right, cool. If you could share. What is your, uh, are you sharing? Yeah. Okay, what's your name, ma'am? Uh, 
Um, my name is Kristen. Um, the experience, most of my group said no. Um, one person said they got baptized, so they felt it during that. Personally, um, I said I've had like multiple experiences where I felt like the presence of God or God move in my life. Um, I've been sick. I had cancer twice. So I've been sick in those instances where I was like really scared. I had it once when I was really little and I don't remember that much, but I know that my mom said my family was praying a lot and they were so worried and scared because it was stage four, which stage four is very um, fatal if you yeah. never, if you don't know what stage four is. And my whole family was like really worried and scared that I was gonna die. And my mom said when I was little that she never forgets it. I remember, don't remember it, of course, because I was like three. But my mom said I was like telling everyone, don't worry that God will protect me and that I'd be okay. So that was one instance. And then again, when I was seven, I was like really worried. But my dad like would pray with me every night. And I just like would sit there and pray to God that I get through it. And another instance when I was about... 13, I went through some stuff where I was like questioning my faith because like so many bad things had happened to me. And I'm like, how could God let these things happen to me? How could he be real if all these things are going on? And then I just had this like revelation one night that like, just because all these bad things happened to me, I shouldn't go blaming God first. Like it just like appeared to me one day that I should be thanking him that I got through these at all because I could have not got through them. So that's just like. So I feel like that was phenomenal, you know, like tearjerker right there. That was a tearjerker, right? Um, but let's see, I, I think I know what the scores will be, but Marcy says three, Kenya, one, Oh, three, and Chaz says three as well. Three, six, nine points. God, that's a good one. That is a good one. All right, so we are going to uh, give an opportunity for the middle school group, for the middle school group. All right? Who's sharing out of this group? You are. Uh, What's your name, sir? Mason. All right, go ahead, Mason. Uh, so, okay. So, um, one of his experiences was that when he had a dream and he was talking to God and he was telling him how, he, how much he was struggling in school, but the next day he, um, he, was, he became the school editor because he, sur like, he surpassed everyone else. So, I mean, if that's not God, I don't know what it is. Mm. And then her, then her experience was that she got to choose. God gave her a choice to either go to heaven or hell. But she chose heaven because it was, like she described it as like a beautiful big target. And... And uh, she described hell as a small box, a small box with pri a small prison box. And if God can give you a choice to either go to heaven or hell, that means that you can have a choice to choose the path of heaven or the path of hell. And my experience, one of my experiences was that um, I, I had multiple dreams, not like they were all separate, but I had them multiple times where I would see, I would be in like a, not like, like a crazy situation, but like just a normal everyday situation. And it would just happen randomly. But a couple months, weeks or six months, the, the, um, the vision that I, the dream that I had would actually happen. And I, when I really realized it, I was really confused at first. <laughs> but then I, but I guess that even, I mean, that's the experience of the future, I guess. If you can get a glimpse of the future in a dream, imagine what you can get 
with God. That's good. That's good. That's good. Good, good, good. So perfect, perfect, perfect. So, uh, Kenya, what do you have for us, ma'am? Three. Marcy. Two. And Chaz. Three. Okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good. So, I know all of us have not, like, had an experience with God before, right? How many people, like, you have had an experience with God? Raise your hand. Like, you've had an experience. Okay. How many people have not? Raise your hand. It's okay. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. How many people have not, but they desire to? Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, I remember one time when, um, when uh, this was, like, a life-changing experience that happened for me where I was actually, like, coming into following Jesus. And as I did that, I was in my bedroom and I was praying one time. And while I was praying in my bedroom, and I was just, like, you know, really trying to seek after God's face and, like, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open type of thing. And it was one time where the Holy Spirit came into my room. Like, literally, I felt... God's presence come into my room and it was so like powerful and strong and that experience right there really opened up my eyes. It's like God's presence came into my room and opened up my eyes and showed me like, yo, you've been living really foul your whole life and you need to get your life right, right? And that experience changed like that one experience opened up my eyes to seeing like, oh my goodness, I really was a sinner and I need to change my life around. And that one experience, and, and I've had multiple since then, like, I can't even, I had one this week, you know, multiple since then just by prayer, by the Holy Spirit himself. And you can have, we don't live by our feelings, but God wants you to have an experience with him. God wants you to know that he's real. And oftentimes it's really going to be hard to follow a God that you only hear about, but you never experience. And so what we have to do as believers, we have to do what the scripture says. We have to seek. We have to knock. We have to search. And you will find. That's the promise. It's a promise. This is a promise. This is a key. This is a promise that if you seek, you will. If you seek, you will. If you seek, you will. Does it say how long? That's the challenging part, right? It just says, seek, and you will find. If you're looking for that, you're going to find out what it actually is, okay? You're going to find God once you seek him. And some of you all, you want to experience God, but you're seeking everything else but God. It's impossible to just like, you have to seek him out. Seek. He's not hidden, but he wants you to desire him. And God can give you that desire as well, okay? Um, I got a question. I got a question. Okay, one more time is wrapping up. Jesus says that the only way to worship him is in spirit and in truth. What do you think it means that we can only worship him in spirit? So let me give you a back really quickly. When we're saying worship, we're not just talking about singing either. Worship is more than singing. Worship is you devote your life to Jesus. You devote your life to God. My life is worship. What does it mean that you can only worship him in spirit? What do you think that really means? This is like a deep question, but I want you all to really try to like dig deep on this one, okay? Come on, put your hands together, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, and then let's get some good answers. I'm going to give you all four minutes, four minutes, okay? Five minutes, five minutes. All right, ready, set, go. So this right here is our flesh. Jesus says the only way to worship him is in spirit and in truth. What does it mean that we can only worship him in spirit? That's a good question. Oh. 
you all to, if you want to, you can turn to your, you can turn in your Bibles because this is a scripture to John 4, 24. And this is going to give you a hit because this, or you can go to John 4, 22 through 26 or something like that. Okay. Just to give you all a little hint. You got an, uh, you got a question? All right. Bet, bet, bet. That's the only hint I got. what you do I mean you you worship what you do not know we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper the true worshiper will worship the father in spirit and truth for the father is seeking such to worship him God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth so I'm gonna go back to the very first one you worship what you do not know we know what we worship for salvation of the Jews. We know what we worship for salvation. Right? But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. What's y'all take on that? I think it's saying, like, I feel black. I think it's saying, like, you have to live right and do right by God. Because if God doesn't live in your heart, how can you truly worship Him, right? Y'all get what I'm saying? If you, let's say that you... All right, y'all, like 15 seconds, 15 seconds, You can't seconds, really be friends with somebody seconds. if you don't know them, right? So if you don't really know God, how can you truly worship Him? You don't know how good He is, what He's done for you, how He sacrificed His only Son, right? So if you don't truly know Him and have Him in your heart, how can you worship Him? You don't know what you're worshiping to, or for, or why, or how. You don't know what it looks like. You only know the word worship, but you don't know All what right. it looks like to worship. Ten seconds, ten seconds, ten seconds. I have a question. They say if you, um, if 
you ever seen God in the heaven or earth? Best step you ever seen God? I heard some good answers. Look, not too God, but I heard some good ones. I did. I did. All right. 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 You not. God is so magnificent. Y'all, pick who's going to speak. Pick who is going to speak out of your group, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Oh, who did first? So like when Jesus came back. Oh, middle school. Yes. All right. Middle school. Let's pop it off. If you could stand up, man, what is your name? Say it one more time for me. Shaq Air. All right, my brother. What school you go to? Um, Tap Middle School. Tap Middle School and your favorite food? Ramen. Ramen. <laughs> ramen. Hey, if ramen's your favorite, brother, you, I got you. I got you. All right, all right. Um, if y'all can hear me, clap once. If y'all can hear me clap twice. All right, let's go, my brother. What you got? Remember the three things we looking for. This was a, this was a tough question, but he got it. Let's go. So what they're talking about is saying that they want you to be able to worship God with not just your body, because if you just say you love him and you just pray saying that, you won't really get into it. So you need to worship with your spirit because God is the spirit himself. And if you worship with your spirit, it will connect together to letting it, to let God hear it and he'll answer you and help you on your journey to heaven. Brother, what grade you in? Eighth grade? I got you. I got you some ramen, bro. That was a good one. I thought, well, I thought it was good, but we got it it's based on the judges, my brother. All right, let's pop it off with Chaz. What you got, Chaz? Three. Okay, Marcy, three as well. And Kenya, three. That's good, that's good, that is good. Do we have a score right now? You want to put, can we put that up now? Not yet? Okay, we'll give you a couple minutes. Get that addition right, brother. All right? <laughs> and high school side, we're going to go with this group. We haven't heard from this group yet. You got it? You got the mic. <laughs> it was looking like, what? What I got? Okay, let's hear Let's hear And if you could stand up as well, what is your name? Uh, my name. Hello? Yo, can you hear me? Yep. My name is Rubens. Ruby? Rubens. Rubius. Rubens. R U B. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ruby. My bad. I'm tripping. My bad. I'm sorry, Ruben. Uh, what school you go to? Uh, I go to Hillgrove. Oh, Hillgrove. I'm sorry. And uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, I don't got one. Hey, hey, quiet, please. Quiet, please. You say, what's your favorite food? I don't got one. I just eat, bro. You just. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right, all right. Um, and if you could give me your an answer. Uh, so, like, for you to, like, be one with God and, like, actually have a conversation with him, you can't, like, you can't just do everything physical and, like, just assume, like, like oh, I walk through the steps of church, I, I go to church, I, you know, I, listen, I sing the songs, I, I, read all the, I read the verse. That don't even mean nothing at the end of the day. Because if you, like, it's like having, like, a fair weather friend, you can't, like, be there one day and then not be there the other day. Like, you got to be there no matter what. So, like, like building that relationship and having that, like, steady incline, trying to get better with him, trying to be more like him, trying to, like, you know, spread his word and stuff like that. Like, it takes more than just saying hi, hello, and all the other stuff. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> all right, Ruben, all right. I think great answer, bro. Kenya, what you think? Three. Is that because that was in your group? He's in your group, that's why you say that? All right, all right. No, that was a good three, I ain't gonna lie. Chaz, three as well. And Marcy, three, okay, 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 okay. That's really good. What are we looking at score-wise? What are we looking at score-wise? Ooh, 23 to 27. Close, close, close. So, yeah, I'm surprised. Is that close? Are we sure that's right? Okay, okay. I'm just asking. That seemed a little sus. But the scripture says this. It says, 
those God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There, I'm just going to break this down really simple. There is no way that you can worship God with your life. Now, what does it mean to worship God with your life? That means that you are really living for Jesus. Does that mean that you're perfect? No. But it means that your life is worship towards the, My life is beautiful to God, right? Is everything? No, not everything. But a lot of my life is beautiful to God. Why is that? It's because he is causing me by his spirit to live like him. You cannot try on your own to be a so-called Christian. You cannot do it. You cannot just try hard enough to worship God. You have to do it through spirit. And the only way, it's only one spirit to worship God in, and that's through his Holy Spirit. You, you remember, I'm, I keep on using this almost every week, but you know it's the same thing with the balloon example that we use. You have to have his spirit inside of you so that you can go up with the helium. If his spirit is the helium, it causes you to go up. If you try it on your own, you go up and then you go right back down. Actually, it's like this. It's more so like the plug and a fan. A fan does not work unless, what is the most important part to, a, to the fan is the power. Without the power, the fan can't do what it's caused to actually do. And so a lot of times we're plugging up not to the God's power source, but to everything else, and it has no power. And so what we have to do is do this thing through God's spirit and his spirit alone.